Well, hello and uh, happy Monday to you. This is the first of um, a devotional series, um, 10 for 10, uh, 10 minutes for 10 days. So uh, weekdays today, this week, uh, five days this week, five days next week, which will take us to April 3rd. Uh, then we'll we'll kind of we're going to be figuring out you know where we go from here how all this works um, if this is um, the next two or three weeks or longer whatever so um, be in prayer for that whole process be in prayer for the country be in prayer for for us the, the, uh, as we make decisions here um, the elders uh, and the church staff as we work to figure out the best plan forward but I want to take a few minutes ten minutes. Um, uh, Monday through Friday, and just kind of come alongside you if you let me share some thoughts on some key topics I think that people are are dealing with, um, or at least they know someone who are who's who's dealing with this stuff. So even though this may not apply directly to you, I think a, an aspect of it probably does all of us. But we can certainly uh, see what the scriptures have to say and come alongside somebody else and help them, even if it's not something we're dealing with as much. But uh, so. With that thought, I'd love to just come alongside here and share some things this morning. Today we're talking about fear and anxiety, or fear and or anxiety. Um, you know, why why do we fear? Why do we get afraid? You ever think about that? Why are we fearful? Why are we so anxious sometimes with certain things? We live this, in, in a tension almost in our world, this, this dualism we have in our modern culture. Um, the first part of that dualism is due to medical advancements, scientific advancements, technology, and the financial blessings that we enjoy in this country, we feel safe. We feel like we can control our life. If we get sick, we've got medicine. We can get you know medical care. We, we can talk to our loved ones. Uh, almost any time we want, we can even see their face on the screen, right, as we talk to them. We, we can plan out our meals weeks ahead of time if you wanted to. Um, a lot of people in the world don't know what they're going to eat later today or tomorrow, let alone two weeks from now. But we can do that in this country. And as the world has gotten smaller over the past decades, we feel a sense of control over what is going on. We can control other nations, we think, sometimes. So that's one thing. We, th we think we can control stuff. The second thing, the second part of this dualism is uh, we, we know that what the truth is deep inside, I think, and that is that we can't control it. We have no control. Disease leads to death. People may not answer our text or our phone call, and we can see what other countries are doing, but we can't control what they do. This dualism that, hey, we can control life, but then the reality is we can't, causes problems. And sometimes when we realize we can't control stuff, we get fearful. When things spin out of control, we get full of anxiety. And I think this is one of those times where, obviously, we've realized we can't control all this. There's things beyond our control here. Sometimes we get fearful or we're just anxious. What's coming next? What happens in two weeks? What about four weeks from now? What's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know we'll get back to normal eventually, but I just don't know when that is. There are some people that are certainly af afraid, fearful of the virus, Others are fearful of what this virus will do, the effects of it, the fallout with the economy, with relationships, with uh, different businesses, and so on. Legitimate fears. But how do you live each day when fear seems to be the dominant emotion? I mean, you, you get fearful, you push it down, you push it away, you renounce it, but it seems to come right back. Uh, sometimes when you just don't expect it. As a follower of Christ, we don't you know, we're not automatically immune to fear. We don't live without it. Fear is a normal human emotion. In fact, fear is helpful. It tells you that there's something wrong. It's a warning signal, kind of like in your car on the dashboard. The light goes on. It's telling you something's wrong. Fear is kind of the warning light in our life sometimes. Back in December, uh, Brian and Jessica and I we uh, raced uh, or ran in the Tough Mudder race up in Phoenix. It was a great time, challenging time, but the last obstacle was about a 30-foot high uh, cargo net, uh, kind of in a pyramid, a, a real slender, you know, triangle kind of format. And you had to climb up one side on the cargo net and climb down the other side. And, and 
I'm not normally afraid of heights, but when you get up to 30 feet in the air and there's just this netting, your brain starts to say something's not right. You're in a dangerous space. I can tell myself all I want. I'm not afraid. I can try and tell my brain it's not you know, dangerous, but my brain starts to make my legs shake and you start to, you know, <laughs> you can't stop that because there's, there's, there's a reality there. No matter what I try and tell it, my brain knows we're not in a normal place. There's a little more danger here than normal. So fear has a good side to it. It can warn us of something that's not quite right. Fear is information when you look at it that way. But fear has a negative side, and we're all too familiar with it, right? It can overwhelm us. Fear can take over. It can begin to control us. And when it takes over, it puts everything through its own filter. Everything you do, everything you think about becomes tainted with fear. So as a Christian, how do we keep that from happening? The Bible's clear that we shouldn't live in fear. Don't let fear govern your life. Scriptures are pretty clear. Jesus says in John 14, verse 27, Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. God tells Joshua, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. David was captured by the Philistines. Pretty fearful situation. Um, in Psalm 56 is the uh, psalm he writes from that experience. He talks about his enemies surrounding him all day long. He says, verse 3, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God's word, who's I, who, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? <laughs> well, they can kill you. <laughs> well, he knows there's a better thing waiting. He says, this I know, that God is for me. Verse 9, verse 10, in God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? He keeps going back to the eternal perspective. Yeah, I can get hurt right now, but in the long term, I'm okay, he says. See, hope in God is the answer to your fear. Confidence in God's presence and in his power is the answer to your fear. It's very theoretical in one sense, isn't it? But at the same time, it's very practical. In the Bible, our fears are calmed by God's presence and calmed by his promises. Knowing that we are his children, knowing we are loved by him. It doesn't mean that we won't experience pain, that we won't experience loss. But it means he's always with us as we walk through the pain, as we experience the loss. David put it this way in the well-known psalm, Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, he writes. Notice in that psalm, David is still walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not that that's taken away. But his solace, his comfort and confidence comes from the fact that God is with him. You are with me, he says, and that conquers his fear of what's there. Peter says, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. The, the, the solution to fear is God's presence and his promises of what waits. So in a time of uncertainty, when you lack control, when fear seems to be pushing on you, Counter your fear with fact. God is love, and God loves you. God is aware of your situation. He's working in you as you walk through the circumstance you're currently in. And God's promised to be with you all the time. And he's promised a future with unimaginable blessings, which will make these current difficulties, as Paul says, uh, a light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So folks, stand strong. Rejoice. Live in hope. God is with us. Pray with me for a minute. Father, we come to you at this time, and it's uh, a time of uncertainty. We may not feel frightened or fearful of the virus, but just all the uncertainty of going on that's going on. Lord, help us, no matter what's going on, to be focused on you, to be confident in you, and trust in you, because you're always with us. And you are greater than any threat. In your name we pray. Amen.
Folks, thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.